succeed at self-publishing. It just takes dedication and, and tenacity. You got to hang on. When it doesn't look like it's going anywhere, you just got to keep going. You got to hit that wall and hit it again until you break through. So, any questions about the other, the either road? So the potholes you need to look out for: editing, cover. <laughs> Make sure you get those two things right. If those aren't right, you won't do as well. The other thing um, is networking. You have to network. Um, that's so important. You can do that online. Is anybody here good online? Do you have a blog? Uh, what do you do online? Uh, just MySpace and Facebook mostly, but I, I do like contact authors, stuff like that. Uh, get on their Facebook pages, email them a lot, uh, just to kind of almost you know, be smooth with them. <laughs> that's, that's good, Sue. You should pick those authors that you're smoothing with and make yourself and, and get funding to go to a convention. And then when you show up, they'll put your name or your face with the name and, and the stuff you've been doing. And that's a great way to, to preset the stage for a con visit. So whatever authors you, you have, go to their website, see where they're going, meet them at a con. Um, but how about, a, uh, how about websites that are, get traffic? How many people have um, any kind of following online? Start, yeah, start working on that first. Mm -hmm. Go to forums. Who, who remembers the forums to go to? Goodreads, it's one word, goodandreads.com. Got to go to that forum. That's going to be an awesome place to start smoothing with readers because you need those readers to read your work. And also, they at Goodreads they have um, reviews, so you can get reviews right away of your work. So they have reviewers. You can also, um, if you're not ready to publish yet, you can get people to um, read it and critique it. So, oh yeah, I almost forgot. Okay, this is a good one. Um, there's a place called anthology or anthonomy.com, A-U-T-H-O-N-O-M-Y, anthonomy.com. This um, is a website from the Penguin Group, one of the big fat five. Doggone it, without my, without my notes, I don't know what they are. Write down the big fat five. <laughs> big fat five publishers, look them up. Now, autonomy.com is a great place to go to perfect your work and to get noticed. Um, you can go there and you can post one chapter at a time. Um, and once at you, if you work your way up in their polls, people write you or rate you. If you can get to the top five, an, an editor from Penguin will review your work. So that's a way to get out of the slush pile. So autonomy.com. Um, the other thing on the other road to publishing you have to be aware of. If you want to go with a big publisher, not very much money. Does everybody remember that from last time? Yeah. They're, yeah, it, it's not very much money. They don't do anything for you. They're not going to give you any, so much as bookmarks to go with your stuff. No, no business cards. They're not going to give you a lot of help, so you're going to have to do a lot of this yourself anyways. And you'll still need a website. Sometimes they sponsor your website, and they will put a website up for you, but that's about as far as they go. So any so questions? why bother going with? That's why I self-published. But because I can't get into every store in the nation. That's true. But even if you're in every store in the nation, how do people know you if you're not, if you're not a well-known name? If they won't advertise for you? You gotta hope that when, how many of you have been to a bookstore? Any of you have been into a bookstore? Okay, when you go and look at the shelves, what do you look for? Five, yeah, five minute warning, but truthfully, you could probably get away with 10. Okay. What do you look for when you hit the shelves? Uh, authors you know, right? Authors you've heard about. How many of you go into a bookstore and browse and say, oh, look at this interesting book. I wonder who this author is. I do. Two? It's a disease. <laughs> Three? So, so, you know, it's not as many. It's half and half. So 50% of people will actually look for you. So it can be a tricky thing to do. With, and you just gotta hope that, you're, you, that you hit the market right and people are interested in your work. So any questions? We only have five minutes less, left. I have a question, but it really goes more with the class you had yesterday. That's fine. Um, if, you, if, if a book is written, and you've heard, you, know, you know biography and autobiography, one is by somebody else, one is by themselves. 
But what if it's an autobiography but done from another person's point of view? How, how do you go about... You can do it from a third person. It wouldn't be really... Third person is like a nameless person, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what if it's really from, say, another person that knows that person? I don't know. But that they're I'm, not actually writing it. Yeah, I do not know that much about biographies. I am. I apologize. I, 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 okay. the, the only biography I've ever done is my bio you know, on, on the back of my book. That's as far as I've come. I guess another way to do it is you don't necessarily call it a biography. It's just a story. Yes, or, or based on true events. Yeah. And then, I'll, and then in the back you can say based on this life, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know, so you can explain. Because a, a true autobiography or biography, do you can't always name everybody that's involved in that person's life because then you've got to go to each person and get, unless yeah. they're dead yes. and get, uh, and even oh. then sometimes you have to go to the family to get permission. To. Would any of you like a tip yeah. on other things to watch out for in your books? Yes. Okay, is this what you came for? Okay, here's a tip that I haven't given you yet. Um, I use things in here like Klingon cloak and laser fire and uh, Superman. Apparently those words are patented or copyrighted or something. Yeah, so if you do that in your work, you have to have a clause, an extra clause in your book. Um, and this is the clause, do you wanna hear it? Yeah. Let's see, it says all trademarks and copyrights mentioned in this work are of fiction, or in this work of fiction, are the property of their original owners. So in other words, I'm using the name, but I claim no ownership. All the ownership belongs to them. Okay. So, so it's just a brief mention. So you have to have that in the front of your book so you don't get caught for their little impingement rule. And as long as it's not um, a major a major thing in your book, okay. If I named my the the handsome prince Clark Kent, <laughs> and my main character was Lois Lane, and then I started talking about Superman, probably would have issues. But since just one of her spells is the Superman spell, and it mentions the movie, and uh, in in her wording, and then after that her key word is Superman. For the, for the flight spell, that's limited. She only uses the spell three or four times, you know, it, it's and you sporadic. still left it with ownership. So, so if you, if you uh, borrow anybody else's terminology, make sure you put that in there. And you would be amazed at what's, what's patented. And so I was shocked to hear. So my first book doesn't have that clause. But there's only a thousand out, so I think that, I think we'll be okay. I don't think they're gonna sue me over the, uh, Seven thousand or seven thousand dollars I made off of it, <laughs> or two thousand off the no, books. No, it's not worth it for that. But if you do make it big and they want to go and publish millions of those along with a whole set when you're done, then right. you might have to go back and reprint that first page with the next thousand. Well, I already have. Yeah. So it's already been already been reprinted. Right. Any so any okay. other questions? Good point. <laughs> no. Um, an odd reverse question for you, based on what you said with editing. Uh huh. Um, again, I've read through several published books where there's main publishers, and I've noticed entire paragraphs that shouldn't be where they are. That's yes, so nobody not is to perfect. Get that. No one is perfect. That's what. I, that's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Is that editors are fallible. I do that all the time. These people take it. Oh man, I gotta call that guy. Yeah, you know. How they do that? And unfortunately, you know, everybody's fallible. And you've got a proofreader, right? No, uh, most um, best-selling authors or you know, big-name authors, have, um, their book gets edited six times before it goes um, to print. Six times. So sometimes these things just happen. So. And don't expect your printer to catch it. Yes. Mm -hmm. They will not. Okay, everybody um, want to put a... They're just friends. Everybody want to put one in here? Yes. So which costume do you guys like better? Oh, I love your blue one. <laughs> you like the blue one I like blue, like too. <laughs> yeah, I like the red one. I like the red one. You like the red? I figured this was really anime. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. It didn't fit oh, in yeah. so well at the Renaissance Fair, but they let me get away with it because okay. I was a guest. <laughs> they were like, that's really not, you know, like a <laughs> I don't think they had polyester <laughs> back in there. <laughs> so, huh? Good song in itself, right? Yeah. Well, I, t I told him, well, technically she is not on Earth. She is in a magical world. So I'm sure they had materials back there that we didn't have. So that's how I got around it. There you go. It works. Okay. So you were here first. Would you like to draw a name? Let me make sure I got them all out here. They're getting stuck underneath. Okay. Here you go. Draw a name. Draw a name. And it is... Jonathan Clark. Oh, hey. Sweet. Do you want a book? Sure. Did you just stop in here to rest? Huh? Or did you just stop in no, here? No, he's to rest? been at your other classes. Okay. I'm so I'm sorry. Been at all, We're connected. Oh, awesome. All your other classes. Okay, this is a first edition. That's so cool, Jonathan. Do you want to sign? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, based on a set of dreams I had, and I was the main character. <laughs> so I was like, man, do I come across arrogant? <laughs> and um, so I did some thinking, and she, when they're, she, they're zapped into this magical world, and they're in the dungeon, she's the first one to figure things out. She's got high intuition, which gives her premonition and a little bit of insight. So she figures things out, and she's really powerful, you know, and she knows that she's the sorcerer of the group. She's like, woohoo, I got, yeah, I maxed out my sorcery, I'm good, you know. So um, in the original version, I have her take control. You know, I have female, I have woman power. She says, look, you know, I, um, who's the only one to know how to speak their language? I cast the language spell. You know, who's the one who's the, who um, can get you home? Me. So. I'm leader, you know, so she takes control of the group right away. And uh, people hated it. <laughs> well, some people, they're like, she's just really arrogant. <laughs> so instead, I, when I put out my new version, I had the arrogant elf smash her. She tries to step up and she knows she should be leader. She's got this feeling inside, she should be leader. So she tries to step up and he's like, you're a woman. And this is the Middle Ages, you know? You're not allowed to leave, you know? And so, and then the arrogant elf gets to make all the mistakes she made that she was stumbling through because she's a newbie. And, and she gets to come and rescue him, you know? And then, of course, they demand, they think that she's, that she should be the leader, so she gets to be leader and fight her way back up to the top. That's cool. So, that's a good lesson. You know, if you have main characters, you gotta make sure that people like them. And a great way to make people like them is to make them an underdog. Make people feel sorry for them. Make people want them to, to succeed. And give, so you have to give them some cha challenges to overcome. I had a really wise mother. I mean, I still do, she's still living. But um, she taught me that at a very early age. It didn't matter what team was playing. She was always for the underdog team. Exactly. Everybody loves an underdog, right? We're, we are America. <laughs> And that's, that's what we champion as the underdog, usually. So, um, any other que final questions? I think our time is up. So, um, I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at my website. Um, does anybody want a business card? Nope, okay. Actually, I do. I, I got your bookmark, but I'm gonna take a business card. Does anybody wanna see what a business card should look like? Sure. <laughs> Mine wasn't designed for an author business card, so it's quite different. Like, That's there's nothing on here but your email or your. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want them to go anywhere but to your email. And right. see, it's got a nice picture of book two, so they can say, oh, yeah, this looks interesting. And then when they want your book, they'll know what to look for. Right. Yeah.